What's up, YouTube? We're going to break down the inevitable for you. It's an unfortunate situation with the NBA rolling like it is. But we got to talk about it. Uh, first of all, I guess I'll start the video by saying that Dr. J basically said that the NBA lockout is inevitable. Um, there's been a Carl Malone and Gary Payton. Both basically came out and said the same thing and blamed David Stern. A few things that have come out that some of you know about, some of you may not. Supposedly one of Kobe Bryant's teammates said that if there is a lockout, he's going to go play in Europe. I'm telling you some anything with Kobe, you got to take it with a grain of salt because this guy's media savvy. you got to look into could there possibly be intentions to say in that and just... Don't take it at face value till he's over there playing. But Jason Kidd came out and said if there's an NBA lockout, he'll probably just retire. Uh, a lot of college ball players decided to stay in college because of this lockout that's coming. Um, Billy Hunter, the executive director of the NBA Players Union, had said he said he's 99% sure there will be a lockout. And we're not talking about a quick lockout where they settle things and then they got it settled by the beginning of the season. We're talking of these people are talking about a work stoppage for the entire season at least. Uh, David Stern has come out and said that there needs to be a fundamental change to the way the players are getting paid, and basically they're they're going to fight over the television contracts. Uh, the ABC, ESPN, and TNT contracts are valued in the billions. Now, supposedly, these teams say they're losing money, but yet um, attendance is, is up, uh, league revenue is up, uh, interest in the NBA is, is it's at the highest it's been since Michael Jordan left. And then you tell us, that, you know, you guys are losing money, but on average, just fans pay $15 to park, $90 for a decent seat, $10 for nachos, and $5 for a pop. But let me tell you something, it's much more than that here in Chicago. And Joseph can tell you how much it is to see the Lakers. So, guys, Joseph and Tim, I think this is ridiculous. Uh, David Stern is a freaking con artist. I mean... We all know this guy's rigged games. We know the way they rigged the NBA to allow perimeter players to score more because they felt that these perimeter players are more marketable. And it's just more shady material coming from the NBA. I mean, you look at the NBA referees, it's like a mafia. Uh, these guys are referees for their entire lives. And the funny thing is Tim Donahue would still be an NBA referee if he didn't get caught up in his gambling scheme. So we'll start with Tim, and everybody welcome Tim to the channel. He's a young, talented sports talk analyst, and I'm telling you, when guys like me and Joseph are gone, because, you know, Joseph and I, just get this out real quick, Joseph and I do this for the love of the sports that we talk about. We can't do this forever, though. We've got priorities. We've got things we've got to do in life. And that's why we're asking you to go to hoopsopedia.webs.com and donate. Go to the donate page and donate to the website, which goes towards the podcast. So we can take this to another level. And heck, who knows, maybe one day Joseph and I can make money off this and make it our number one priority. And then you don't have to worry about us going anywhere. But as it stands right now, if, if we aren't able to realize our dreams of making documentaries and and taking the podcast to the next level. We're not going to be here forever. And let me tell you something. If we're not here forever, this guy Tim right here that you see in the middle is the next generation. So give him respect. Uh, he's going to uh, improve as he goes. He's already a great sports talk analyst. So, Tim, why don't you give the folks your thoughts on what looks like is just, I mean, basically – it's going to happen, man. The lockout's coming, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a real shame considering the NFL is going to, might miss some time next season. That would have been a real opportunity for the NBA to 
maybe not go back on top permanently, but get some more interest in. I mean, like you said, interest is as high as it's ever been. I mean, that has a lot to do with LeBron James taking his talents to South Beach. But the bottom line is they are losing a lot of money. And they, while they're making more money this year, I believe they lost like $500 million last year. Um, something I do want to get across is if there's going to be a lockout, can we please get a new commissioner? Because I am just getting sick and tired of having to listen to David Stern or uh, fine everyone $25,000 every single time they talk about something. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, the owners aren't making money in my mind because of the simple fact that there's less stars in the NBA and the big stars that there are are all going to the same teams. They're going to the New York Knicks, and it's only going to get worse. Chris Paul or someone's going to go to the Knicks. Dwight Howard's going to move on and go to someone else. I mean... There's gonna, it's getting to the point where there's three or four teams every year that have a legit shot to win. And it, it's not like the 80s where there were seven or eight teams and then there were other teams that were good. I mean, there's six teams in the Eastern Conference that won like 35 games or less. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, great points, man, great points. Uh, Joseph, before we get into our opinions of whose side we're taking and everything like that, why don't you break down, you know, fundamentally what you see with this situation? Well, look at it this way, man. We got 24 teams that are going to be over the salary cap this year, which basically to me means you have some terrible owners. Okay, you have owners who are investing money. You have owners that are controlling their draft picks who don't know what the hell they're doing. Look at the Timberwolves. These guys have a top five pick every year. And look what they're doing with it. They're drafting a point guard every year, you know, or some nonsense. So you got a lot of bad owners. you got a lot of bad teams. you got a shady commissioner who's trying to act like both sides are working so hard to get this resolved and et cetera. Nope. This lockout is going to happen. And I've heard at the very least we're going to have no NBA from where the season would start until after Christmas break. You know, I heard that's at the very least, and that's almost a, you know, for sure right now. So it absolutely sucks, man. And somehow this is what I don't get. The NBA is predicting a loss of $350 million this year. How in the hell is that possible? I want to see proof. I mean, because that's just hard for me to believe. This year, the NBA ratings have skyrocketed. I know it, um, you know, look at the first game of the year, Boston versus Miami Heat. Highest uh, televised regular season game, you know, in cable history on cable channels. So it's been a great year for the NBA. The interest is at, like you said, the highest it's been since 1998. And I just want to see proof of these losses because I find it, you know, simply hard to believe. And like Tim said, sucks that it's happening right now because the NBA really has taken a huge step forward this year. We've all stuck by it through its kind of down years since Jordan retired and you had some really bad finals matchups, et cetera, but it's kind of getting back on track. And, you know, it's just too bad, man. It's just, you got Donald Sterling. You got the GM in Minnesota. You got Milwaukee. I mean, you got so many bad teams. I think that's a big part of it. You know, how are 24 teams over the salary cap, but we only have about four or five teams that could contend for a title? So. Yeah, and these owners are the ones signing the paycheck for these contracts to the players that they're complaining about, Joseph and Tim. And, you know, the thing that really blows my mind is that I've heard a lot of owners who bought sports franchises, and the thing I've always heard over the years is that they didn't buy the franchise to make money. They bought the franchise because they love the sport. They bought the franchise knowing that they make their money when they sell the team. Uh, you want to sell your, your franchise when it's valued at a high rate, and you, you don't expect to make money along the way. But the thing that baffles me is all this money that comes in for merchandise and, and uh, ticket sales and the TV contracts, the local TV contracts, the national TV contracts. You can't convince me that these teams are losing money the way that they're telling us they are. I don't buy it. Okay, Maybe some of your small market teams are struggling. Well, then let's, let's talk about some contraction, because we could 
do with a few less teams. Let's face it. Let's be honest. It would become a more competitive NBA. But I'm totally on the player's side with this, with the current contract that they have signed. Um, the, actually, the amount of money they make over the last five years has gone down. And we've seen players in Bosch and, and Wade and LeBron take less money to play together in Miami. You don't hear them praise that, you know. But I think fundamentally what Joseph said is correct. If you are going to sell us on the fact that you are losing money, hey, as the as the as we are the investors who invest our hard-earned money into this sport. Prove it to us. Because quite honestly, and Tim is a big baseball fan, as you can see by his Philly shirt, Tim, the last Major League Baseball strike, had major ramifications, and it took uh, steroided up home run hitters to bring the interest back in the game. So this is really bad timing. We've got about four minutes left, so you guys got about two minutes each. What more do you want to add to this, Tim? Yeah, and that steroided part led to everyone finding out they were on steroids, which led to a decline in fans, which is sort of coming back now, but... I mean, I like pitching baseball, but most people don't. Um, I, I'm not really on a side necessarily. I see the owner's argument. There needs to be less teams. But, I mean, it's not just the small market teams. Living in Philly, I've seen the Welsh Fargo Center just empty. They can't – they say 12,000 every night. It's like 10,000. I mean, they, they are not drawing well enough at all these cities, and it's because the number one stars on the Sixers are guys like Andre Iguodala and Elton Brand. It's because they're stuck with those contracts. What the Sixers need to be able to do, what all teams need to be able to do, is they need to set up a system like the NFL where you can get out of contracts, you can guarantee less money, and the biggest thing I think they need to do is they need to stop with that draft lottery and just go by worst record because it will allow the smaller teams to go, instead of everyone tanking the entire season to get a better percentage, you'll have a better idea of who's going to get the pick, and maybe some of those teams later in the season will play, and it will get the smaller market teams, the higher picks, and eventually maybe they'll get a LeBron James like Cleveland did. Great points. And, it, you know, you brought up the draft lottery. You know, you look at when the Bulls got the first overall pick and got Derrick Rose, something was fishy with that lottery. And we, we all know about the historic uh, lottery in the 80s that has been proven to be rigged for the Knicks. But, Joseph, what else do you have to add? Last thing I'll say is, you know, I sit here and I say, prove it to us. We're not the only ones. The NBA union has lots of disputes with what the NBA, you know, what David Stern is saying that they're making and that they're losing. So even the players, even Billy Hunter, you know, these guys don't have proof themselves. And they have some disputes. And also, here's one thing that disturbs me. In the NFL, it's bad for the owners to lock up because they will lose money. In the NBA, you do have teams that have not made money, so the owners won't be losing money. So it's actually beneficial for some of the owners in the NBA so they could care less if there's a lockout or not, and that does worry me. Yeah, and you know, since we got a little bit of time left, um, I really like Tim's points. I really like Joseph's points. And the one thing that you'll always know is the players are going to be the first to fold. Because you only have 30, you know, around 30 owners, 30 people, or, you know, most of these franchises have uh, basically, you know, like the Bulls, Jerry Reinsdorf is the main owner, he's the main shareholder, he's the, the head man, but it's a group that owns the team. Michael Jordan is the main shareholder, but it's a group that owns the team. And you have many less people involved on the owner's side, so it's easier for them to stick together. And what you're going to end up seeing is these mid-level guys, these guys who make less money, just like you're seeing in the NFL right now with this uh, antitrust suit or whatever it is against the Brady Act, because your rich NFL players want to stick together and get through this and win. But the guys who are making less money, and you're hearing reports of guys who are already out of money, they just want to get back to playing so they can get those game checks. So the ones who make less money will end up breaking off from the ones who make more money, and the guys who make more money are going to be more firm in their stance, and the ones who make less money are going to cause problems 
for the players' union who were going to want to stick together and win. And I think the best point made in this entire video was by Tim, and that is these guaranteed contracts. You need to have more incentive-laced contracts, which makes it fair for both sides, and then players get paid based on the way that they play, based on performance. It's as simple as that. Both sides can be happy, but there needs to be more transparency. We can see how much the players make. We don't see how much the owners do. We're out.